Hi there, and welcome to another Tech Song video. This time, what we're looking at is probably one of the most unimpressive looking uh, browser screens ever. This is a test screen that I've put together using HTML and JavaScript, but it has a purpose. It is going to uh, allow us to send commands to our Pi Face device attached to our Raspberry Pi from the browser. Let's go ahead and get started. And what we're going to actually be exercising today are the series of LEDs on the Pi Face that you're looking at right here. So first, let me give you a quick rundown of the code that we're using to do this. In fact, I should say just the HTML. I'm going to just give you a walkthrough of the interface that uh, we're going to be using to send commands to the to the Raspberry Pi that the Pi will then pass on to the Pi Face. Uh, so really, a lot of HTML here, it's mostly a lot of uh, setup and layout stuff that I'm uh, doing with Twitter Bootstrap, but what you need to be looking at here are the test buttons. I've got some test buttons here in HTML. Uh, they've all got unique IDs. Um, they've got their labels of lead, uh, test one, test two, and test three. And then uh, they are really being leveraged here by some JavaScript, and I'll bring that up. Uh, I've got a piece of JavaScript here that I'm calling pyface.js, and it's really simple. It's basically just implementations of uh, click events on the buttons themselves. And what they're doing is when each of these buttons is clicked, it's uh, sending a, a just a simple get request with no payload to um, some endpoints here that I've specified using uh, using Java. Uh, and then based on the string response that it gets back, then it just populates a, a text area, which I've got up here. So it takes the text area, gets a handle on it, and it just sends the text response back to that text area. I'll show you that real quick before we go and look at the Java code. And that's what each one of these uh, click handlers is doing on each of the buttons. So back to the HTML, I've got uh, this text area called server response, and that's basically what's taking the string response from the server. So jump back over to the browser here real quick. I've got these buttons, and I've got this text area here that accepts a response from the server. And then I'll jump back over to the code, and I'll show you that I've got um, a Spring Boot application running. Um, I have a tutorial on how to get a Spring Boot application up and running. It's super simple. Uh, so there's not a whole lot to see here in the actual application class, but the, this class is critical to us starting the Spring application. And then here I've got an API controller. This API controller is basically the implementation of each of my uh, endpoints here that I'm, I'm referencing in those, uh, those buttons. So each button is going to call one of these endpoints and then the the only thing that we have going on in the implementation is it's returning a string. Each string is different here in this particular example. I have got it, got it again, and still got it. And because I'm already up and running, I'll show you that that is working. When I click on LED button 1, it says got it. When I click on 2, it says got it again. And when I click on 3, it says still got it. Now I am running this locally. As you can tell, I'm referencing localhost up here. But what we're going to do is we're going to run this software on the Raspberry Pi, and it's going to actually interface with the Pi face itself and uh, do some things that we want it to do. So what we'll do is we'll start modifying the code, and then we'll get that code on the Raspberry Pi and see it work with the Pi face. Let's go ahead and move into that. Okay, I'm back in my API controller, and this is a Spring MVC controller. And it is important that if you're going to follow along with this exercise that you do have an understanding of Spring MVC and Spring Boot. I can help you get up to speed with some of that stuff, and I'll make sure to link to some of the tutorials that I've done in the past that'll help you uh, get sort of the basic idea of what to do there. What I'm going to do is make it easy on myself here, and I'm going to create a, um, a, a single reference to the uh, the Pi Face controller, and that way we can make sure that we've got this handy. We don't have to, to to call this, and I'll make it final because we know that we don't necessarily need this to to, to in fact we don't want it to change uh, in in any way. So what I'll do is just go ahead and make a reference to the Pi Face device, and then as I'm as I'm going along here, you're going to see some red because the compiler isn't going to know what I'm talking about right off, and uh, we'll just make sure that we do those imports so that it all makes sense. First, I'll just go ahead though and type this stuff out. All right, so there's going to be some stuff that I do need to make sure I do an import on. Let me do that here. Okay, I think that I'm having a little bit of trouble importing these uh, some of these classes because I need to make some changes here to my dependencies, I think. So I've got pi for j core. I need pi for j device as well. Doesn't seem to know those right off. I also need to make sure that I'm including pi for j GPIO, 
extension. Let's see if it knows those. It does. So now when I go back to API controller, I should be able to do that, and I do. So when I when I make sure that I've got all the right dependencies in place, then it actually does go ahead and bring in everything that I'm looking for. All right, and I did make some quick changes here that I want to explain. Um, the the actual the PyFace device when uh, is when it's actually being initialized. One of the possibilities is that you actually could get an I/O exception that you do need to account for. So what I've done is I've made sure that in the constructor of the API controller, that's where we're actually doing the initialization, so that in the event of an error, we can go ahead and make sure that we output to the log what the uh, exception is, and then um, I'm actually setting the PyFace to null in those cases. I think that we know for the purposes of our testing, our device is always going to be connected. We we have that expectation. So I feel comfortable doing this. Let me go ahead and move on, and we'll start go ahead. We'll we'll start implementing some code to see if we can get some of these LEDs to turn on. Okay. To begin, I'm going to do a little bit of cleanup. I uh, in setting up this project, I've set some path names that I don't really care for, and I want to make sure that I go back and change some path names and some method names to things that actually make more sense to me. So I'll go ahead and I'll do that now. I'll say, uh, you know, actually I think I can keep test test two and test three. I don't mind that so much, but I'll call this. Um, We'll call this path button button one. We'll call this path button two. And we'll call this path button three. And then what that's going to require me to do is uh, go back to my um, JavaScript that's controlling the front end and just make sure that I account for those changes. So I'll change this to button one. I'll change this to button two. And I'll change this to button three. And then we can now move on. Let me go back to my controller. What I'll do is uh, the first test, when you select the first button on the screen, what I'm going to have that do is I'm going to have it just blink the first LED. In fact, what I'll do is I'll make it blink the first two LEDs. So here's how I'm going to do that. I do need to get a handle on the uh, Pi Face controller, which uh, we have a reference to. Um, on line 15 of our class. So what I'll do is I'll first just say PyFace and then I'll make use of a, a method called get LED. That takes an argument. The argument that it's going to take is the actual LED that we want and we have a um, uh, we do have a static reference on a class called PyFace LED. So we'll grab that and we'll say go ahead and get us LED 0. That's the first one. And then what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and turn that on. Actually, we're not going to do that. We're going to toggle it. So if it is off, it'll turn on. And if it's on, it'll turn off. And I'll grab the one that's right next to it and do the same exact thing. So now we've got the first two LEDs and we're going to toggle them. And then what I'll do is I'll just make sure that I return to my browser a message that says that I got the message. It's going to say, OK, check the first two LEDs. So that's the first method. In the next method, we're going to do something different. We're going to take the second and the third LEDs, and we're going to blink them. Let's go ahead and do that now. So that's going to be LED2 and LED3. I'm going to make reference to the blink. It does take an argument. Let me go back. We saw that we saw the the IDE sort of helping us and letting us know that it does take an, an argument. Let's see what it, it does. Um, so it says that it's uh, going to take two arguments. Uh, I would imagine that one of them is the uh, duration. Let's say that we'll have this thing blink for we'll say five seconds. It takes a long, and then we'll do the same thing with the next LED. We'll make sure we return a message to our browser. And then we'll move on to the last method. Okay. And then in the last method, we're going to grab the fifth and the sixth LEDs. And what we're going to do is we're going to make those pulse. So we'll uh, get a handle on those LEDs. And we will make that. Uh, We'll give it a speed of 30 and hope that that's something that's uh, visually appealing. And then we'll grab the last one. Lastly, we'll make sure that we return a message to our browser.
and that's that. So in order to test this, we have to get this code up to the Raspberry Pi, and I'm using GitHub for that. So I'll go ahead and I'll save these changes with GitHub, and then I'll log into the Raspberry Pi and we'll check out that code and see if we can get it running. Now that I've been, now that I've been able to log into the Raspberry Pi to, to check out the actual uh, project from GitHub, I'm able to go ahead and build it successfully, and now I want to start it, making sure I start it as root. And now that our application has started up, um, I feel pretty good about it because I do see that the endpoints that we've registered are showing during the startup process, which is a good thing. We can go to our browser and see our application. This time, of course, we're calling the uh, Raspberry Pi's internal IP address. We're specifying port 8282 because that's what I put in my configuration. Uh, that's something that you can change uh, in the application if you needed to. Uh, what we're going to do now is just uh, have a look at the Raspberry Pi, which is up and running, and we're going to just start pushing these buttons to see if what we programmed actually worked. Let's uh, run back over to the code real quick and we'll see that our first method has us just toggling the first two LEDs. So I'm going to click this blue button here and then you see that the two LEDs do turn on. I'll click it again and they turn off. And you'll also notice that the message that we got from the server is now displayed in this text area. Let's try LED number two. I'll click it all right, so it's on. I think we were actually thinking that it was going to blink. Let me just see if it, oh, okay. So it looks like what we actually did was we specified a blink for five seconds. Let me run back over to the code. Yeah, what we did here is we actually said blink, and then we put um, 5,000 milliseconds there in, as the argument, and that's actually the blink speed as opposed to the blink duration. So that was just a misunderstanding of what the API uh, was supposed to actually do, and, and had I read the documentation, I probably could have avoided that. So let's go ahead now and try LED3. I'll push this red button. I don't see anything happening there. Looks like LED1 is still working, but I don't see anything happening on LED3. Let me just let me just check my uh, check my log. I don't see any errors, so it just could be that the pulse that we we configured was either incorrect or it was just too fast. It was just too fast to see. I don't know. But anyway, this does give you the idea of how to send commands to the Raspberry Pi and how to program to have those uh, commands interpreted as instructions that go to the Pi face. Uh, not a 100% success, but certainly you get the idea. I'll go ahead and close up the video from there. And in my next video, what I'll do is I'll show you how to actually engage the LEDs by pushing the actual toggle switches that are on the Pi face itself. So it'll eliminate the browser sort of simplify the code and show you uh, a, a bit of a different way to implement those uh, events on the buttons on the hardware itself to turn on an LED. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.